Good afternoon and welcome to the Non-Farm Payrolls webinar live event with me, David Madden. Today's date is Friday the 10th of January 2020 and the time has just gone 13.15 GMT. And this week's um, event is going to be an interesting one. Uh, before we get into the, kind of the details of the, the numbers and what's been gone so far, I've got to, go, got to go through the process of showing you the basic risk warning slides. Uh, it's all fairly straightforward. If you regularly attend our live webinars or watch our videos or been to, been to one of our live seminars, uh, you know what they're all about. It essentially states anything that is covered in these webinars uh, or any of the events we hold or videos are, cannot, should not be construed as explicit trading or investment advice. It's merely just um, my own kind of commentary, thoughts, views and opinions. And feel free to have your own. Uh, the, the, the chat box is there. Uh, for everyone to kind of feel free to just type in, write a comment, uh, or, or ask me a question, which I'll happily answer as the trading as the uh, webinar goes on. And uh, all we're going to do today is basically take a look at what's been going on in the state of the U.S. economy, uh, and have a look at um, the how markets have been behaving the last few days, when the numbers come out uh, in, in um, at half past the hour. We then be look, we then be looking. At, you know, Reacting to the numbers first and foremost, but also uh, take, you know wondering you know what, what kind of moves can we expect coming out of this? Now, if you cast your minds back to last month's jobs report, it was fantastic. It was basically what I would give it an A1. You know, we saw the headline figure came in a well above expectations. Two hundred and sixty-six thousand jobs were created. Great number for November. Well above market expectations. So that's one. The previous, the previous month's number, the, read, the October reading, was giving a healthy revision upwards. So that, that, that another, another star for that. The unemployment rate dropped back to 3.5%, so a joint 50-year low. And we also saw a tick higher in uh, average earnings as well. So average earnings are at 3.1%. Uh, that in itself is decent because it's well above the, uh, the, the CPI, the inflation level in the US. So, um, so American workers are in a scenario whereby they're basically in jobs we're probably not a million miles away dare i say from full employment uh, if you're at three three and a half percent in terms of unemployment rate it's going to be you know you're not going to get that much lower in terms of you know chipping away at 3.4 3.3 so on and so forth um so the unemployment so americans are in jobs and they're earning decent uh, and they're earning decent they're earning decent money because it, the wages that they're getting the, the Rate at which increased wages are increasing comfortably outstrips the uh, the cost of living. So things are good on that front. And if you take a look at the recent kind of in any uh, earnings indicators and employment indicators we've seen recently in the ISM manufacturing uh, reading, we can see at the IS the manufacturing in the US as a sector continues to be weak. That's a, that, that that's an issue. Uh, but if, if you look inside the manufacturing sector itself. Uh, the, the overall manufacturing reading, ISM manufacturing, was printed, a, or, you know, er, last week printed a fresh 10-year low, and within inside that, the earnings component was weak. It was um, came in at 45.1, which is also, you know, a new 10-year low. So, manufacturing is clearly weak, but you know, that's only one portion of the overall U.S. economy. If you take a look at the numbers that came out this week, if you take a look at the ADP, uh, ADP, ADP private uh, employment roll. We can see that in the month of December, uh, 202,000 202, jobs were created. That's a strong figure. You know, we, we often heard economists say over the years, the United States needs to be adding basically at least 200,000 jobs per per month for the economy to keep moving along. So over 200,000 jobs, that was a decent number. And keep in mind, uh, economists were expecting only 160,000 jobs to be created. So it's, a, so it's a, a decent number. And on top of that. It is a fairly decent uh, beat on terms of expectations. Adding to that, the uh, the previous month's reading, the uh, the October reading, was revised higher to 124,000 from the from the initial reading, which is pretty poor to be honest, of 67,000. So once again, it's uh, the headline beats and comfortably and is a decent revision to the upward. So the latest ADP has been good. If you take a look at yesterday's initial jobless claims. Um, we're talking about in the region of um, it came in at two hundred fourteen thousand. You know the, the the previous weeks, the the previous week's number was two hundred and 
23,000, which was re revised down to 222. So it fell from 222 to 214, which isn't a massive drop. But keep in mind, economists were expecting a reading of 220,000. So better expected, so it's a fall, which is good. And it's also better expected, which is also good. You know, I kind of view the initial job as claims rate and the unemployment rate kind of in the same vein in that, you know, they don't really kind of seem to kind of move around a whole lot in that, and they've taken the, job, the, the jobless claim array. Um, you know, the, the most recent low was a couple, was a few months ago, and it was, and it was, it wasn't that much, it wasn't that much below two hundred thousand. You know, any kind of initial jobless claims rate if you've seen, they haven't really gone that far below two hundred thousand. Like it on a few occasions, the unemployment rate has dropped down to three point five percent. It's gotten down down there. On a few occasions, it might maybe ticked up ever so slightly by one tenth of one percent, whatever it may be, but hasn't really kind of strayed away. So it, it tells me that that the as far as things go, and possibly to do with the wages that are being offered by the U.S. employers, they're kind of not much making. They're not making any more progress. If you were to take a look at a long-term chart of how things panned out in terms of the jobs market in the U.S., say from 2012 to 2014 onwards, you see a steady decline. We seem to be in the leveling off period now, and that's possibly just because, you know, the U.S. economy is doing well. The third quarter GDP was stronger than se the second quarter G GDP. We've had, you know, the, the three rate cuts that the Federal Reserve had reduced between June and October, they have yet to fully kind of trickle down to the economy. And you could argue that the the October cut probably isn't going to trickle down until about April or June this year, and so on and so forth. So it's, there's still a lot, a, lot of, a lot more ground to go, but in terms of what the, the real true shape of the US economy. But it seems to me that the, the employment, the jobs market is kind of capping out unless earnings kicks in. And we do, and if you see decent increase in earnings, what I've just done there is I flipped over to the voters terminal which I have, which I have accessed, which I've accessed to and I've accessed it um, on, on the website. So you can see here, uh, I'll talk you through in a second the actual what we're expect, ex, ex, expecting for the this week's employment number and the likes, and this 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 week's jobs figures. But I want to finish the point of that. Unless employers start offering that much more wages, we're probably not going to see see get new people and jobs. It's almost like um, when you get to the point of if, uh, of unemployment, or we get to the point where everyone who wants to be in a job is in a job. It's difficult to get to create to get more people in work basically. Um, and unless you, unless you see a scenario where people are actually the you know, wages start to start to have a decent increase in further from what they are, could then we actually see more more actually jobs being created and more, more more kind of vacancies being filled. And seeing as unemployment isn't really dropping any lower and wages aren't really growing any real higher, it tells me that we're, we're probably we're getting close to full employment in my view. Perhaps I'm wrong, but that's just kind of the way I see kind of how things go. Perhaps in four or six months down the line, when the interest rate cuts from last year kick in, and then that that spurs on further um further ec economic activity. But we'll see how that plays out. Uh, looking at the what we're expecting, uh, so we're expecting this in this report. It's coming out just over three minutes time. 164,000 jobs to be added. Keep in mind, last week, last month rather, last month, 266,000 jobs were added. So last week's number was a monster number. The jobless rate, unemployment rate, is tipped to hold steady at a joint 50 year low of 3.5%. And the number I'm probably paying most attention to is the average earnings. Average earnings of 3.1% is supposed to remain unchanged. Now, for me to get a, to give to give a, what I would call an A star or an A1 um, in a jobs report, you want to see the headline number coming in above expectations. <clears throat> you want to see uh, ideally a, pre a positive revision to the previous month's number. You want to see a fall in unemployment, and you want to see an increase in wages, and all of which that are you know, all of which exceed your expectations. I suspect, you know, it's going to be it's going to be a difficult one to to in my view. You know, my uh, my uh, my guess is 180,000. Uh, feel free to type in the uh, type in the box what you think um, your uh, your prediction is going to be. I'm going to go uh, 180,000 um, on the on the rate. I think it's, you know we've seen a lot of in recent months we've seen a lot of jobless you know, headline figures come in sub 200 sub 200,000. So I think it's going to be below 200,000, but still 
things don't appear to be in a good shape with the US economy, so I think it's probably better than 164. You know, whatever your views are, feel free to get thought in the box there, and we can just kind of happily read some numbers out. We can do a bit of comparing and contrasting. I've, as, a, as much as, I, as I'd like to see the 266,000 figure being revised higher, I don't think we're going to get it. To be honest, I'd, I'd take it as a win if it, if, if it remains unchanged, or even if it only gets revised lower by 10 or 20,000, because, you know, creating over 240 jobs, 200, over 230,000 jobs, will still be uh, you know an, an impressive feat. The unemployment rate, in my view, is probably gonna is probably gonna stand still, most likely stand still, possibly tick higher. Uh, I'd be surprised if it go down any lower. May you know I don't see it's gonna 3.3, maybe 3.4, but you know I'm, it's earnings. You know I'd, I'd like to see earnings come in at 2.3.2 .2 or um, or 3.3. I do you know because you know. When people work, when people earn more, they tend to spend more, and that's really what drives on the economy. You know, like I was saying, no, feel free if you're listening out there to um, to type in the box what you think uh, your your view is. Whether we're going to see, um, you know, are we going to see more than 164? Are we going to see more than 2,000? Are we going to see something like 100,000? Um, it's also worth noting, which we will cover in a few minutes. We all afterwards we will have the Canadian numbers out. The Canadian rate is tipped. To uh, pull back from 5.9 to 5.8 percent. Um, on the employment change, remember last year, last month it dropped by over 71,000. Now it's supposed to swing around to positive 25,000. So I will be covering that, and I will be looking at dollar cat because those of you who listen to the videos that we produce um, every week, you will see um, we will see how uh, things pan out. Oh, it's we're coming down to the, the last. Uh, yes, Carl. I've uh, I will cover um, gold and silver. To be honest, given that we are 12 seconds away from the numbers, I will then um, I will then um, I will have a look in at the numbers. I'll have a look at gold and silver afterwards. So I'm guessing 180, 145. Okay, that's um, it's a good number. Yeah, it's an okay number. It's not particularly impressive. 145, slight revision down by 10,000. On last month's stellar number down to 256, which is all right. I'd take that. You know, if we combine the two, 145, 256, that's there, there are about 400,000. Divide that by two, over 200,000. So, on average, in the last two months, the US created 200,000 jobs each month. Like I said at the beginning of the webinar, I was saying if the US economy keeps churning out 200,000 jobs on average, that's pretty good. So, that's pretty good. Unemployment rate. As it is, it's very boring. Held steady at 3.5%, a joint 50-year low. Oh, and on the earnings front, that's a bit of a disappointment. On the earnings front, average earnings increased by 2.9%, which you know below the forecast of 3.1, and the drop off from the previous 3.1. I would say this is a slightly softish report. So if we look at the numbers as a, an entirety, the headline figure came in was obviously a big drop off from, the, from last month. The last month was monster. Was a big was a big drop off last month's number, which is to be expected. Below expectations, it's an okay number. It's below expectations, slight downward revision to that. So the, that's all all right. And the earnings, you know, unemployment in line, unchanged. Average earnings on a yearly basis cooled ever so slightly. Average earnings on a month on month basis, uh, you know, dropped ever so slightly and dropped on the month and missed expectations. I would suggest that this is slightly, um, slightly negative. Not that the negative, slightly poor. You know, this this for me is kind of you know maybe a low B, perhaps, or maybe even a C. In maybe maybe get a low B, a B minus in terms of an update. You know, it's not it's not, it's not terrible, but it's not particularly impressive to be perfectly honest. Uh, we look at see uh, a gentleman there was asking uh, about how things are going to go for gold and silver. My guess is that this will be actually be slightly positive. Um, for both gold and silver. Keep in mind, I start off. Oh, that's, that's copper. I'll start off with the gold market. Keep in mind, gold hit a basically a fresh six-year high. Um, only only during the week on the back of the Iran tensions. So the wider view has been to the upside. Multi-month, multi-year high achieved here. We're pushing a bit lower here, and. I was keeping an eye on the kind of one about on the 15 and 55 area because it, 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 there thereabouts was the high achieved in September. 
And if you also scroll back all the way to 2013, it was kind of there, thereabouts, the low in February 2013. So we're not too far away from this. So, so, so we're not, wasn't too far away from it, you know. It was a so the, so the so that level is very significant from February 2013. It was significant in September 2019. And if you look at it now, we're currently trading pretty much on it. So we've had that we've had the massive move to the upside. We've had the pullback. We're struggling there thereabouts at 1555. If we can hold in around, if we can get back about 1555 and hold that that line, we could look to kind of rebuild that that support at 1555 and then press down higher from here. And then, of course, if you go beyond that, we could then be looking heading in you know more medium term view up towards 1590, up towards 1600. You know, of course, a big psychological number. My instant reaction was that this is going to be a positive for gold. I could be wrong, but that's that's just my view. I'll see what the price actually has been. It has moved to the upside, but you know, to be perfectly honest, I've seen so many times now from payrolls within 10 or 15 minutes or half an hour of the numbers coming out and everything gets digested. Things turn around, but I still maintain the view this is ever so slightly positive for gold, because let's face it, part of the reason why gold was so was was selling off because the, the Iranian fear has disappeared and everyone is buying into stocks. If stocks do start to pull back a small bit because people go, you know what, maybe the U.S. economy is in an amazing shape. Uh, we've had record highs on the U.S. indices yesterday. Let's take some cash off the table and let's buy, uh, you know, the classic rotation into gold. So we could see a move higher. In gold over the next week or so. So, and if you look at say a, a shorter term charting, one or uh, one, one hour chart, we can see here that the that the 200 hour moving average along here provided nice support in that area in around 1540. We're now currently still around kind of 1556. If you can hold above that metric there, we could be looking heading back towards 1560. We can see in a few occasions that area acted at resistance. And then if you press on higher from there, there's some consolidation in the kind of 1580 zone. Uh, I'll also be taking a look, obviously be looking, you know, I've only got time to it. I'll look at the indices, I'll be looking at the major dollar crosses. So anyone else, um, feel free to feel free to um, stick in the box what markets you're looking at, uh, you want me to look at, but I will be covering the big ones. Similar view on gold. Um, Gold's been, been pressing higher since, very, since, since mid December. Uh, we've seen uh, because of the Iranian tensions hit a metric last a level last seen in September. So we know we hit we hit say four month highs this this week. Bit of a correction because of the Iranian fear subsided, but I do think this uh, uh, this this these, these payrolls are going to be positive for gold. So I think the wider trend is still still in play. I've said that the, more, the last few months or few weeks has been positive and that's in my view is still in play especially if you continue to hold above the, you know, the recent lows in around 17 spot 80 if and if you continue to press and press on higher from here you could be heading back up towards 14 sorry 18 spot 4 now take a look at an hourly chart you can see closer kind of intervals see so the thing about silver versus gold we can see previously at the I'm looking at an hourly chart here and this red line here, the 200 hour moving average, acted as decent support for gold, for silver for quite some time. And, the, but, and it acted as support here nicely, but as soon as the market turned negative, the market failed to get back above us. So if you're trading silver, first things first, I'd like to see the, the silver market get back above the 200 hour moving average in a, just north, you know, in at 18 spot 03. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at 18 spot 2. You know, we could see here, acted as uh, support, then resistance. And then press beyond, move beyond that could take us up towards 18 spot 4, 18 spot 60. But if you do manage to turn over on itself and take out the recent lows here um, in around eight, 17 spot 84, 17 spot 80, we could be looking heading back down towards 17, 17 70 or up down towards this area here in around 17 spot 37. I hope that answers your questions in relation to gold and silver. Uh, I'll now take a look at some of say, the likes of the, uh, the FTSE. Like I said, I'm going to be running through some of the big indices, some of the big currency pairs. But if there's anything else you want, you want me to comment on, uh, feel free. Then, um, there's no need, to be, uh, no need to be shy uh, in relation to this. Um, so we're taking a look at, at the FTSE 100. I would suggest that the, the report is ever so slightly negative for stock markets. You know, There's nothing to get really overly excited about. You know? So I think we might see... 
we could shift a small bit lower, but you know, in the, in the near term, in the next few hours. But keep in mind, let's just look where we came from. You know, if this is the FTSE 200, they've broadly been move, moving higher since October. Uh, at the end of last month, we hit, we hit multi-month highs, highs that last seen since last summer. So the trend is very much the upside. Post Iranian uh, tensions fading, uh, we've seen the, the market gain pretty much most of the, of the, of the ground. It pulled back. Uh, we'll be looking at the S&P next. Uh, the market pulled back most of the ground it lost because of the, of the uh, Iranian fears. Um, I think in the, in, the kind of one, in the next few days, we could press on higher from here. In, in the next day or so, we probably could drift, drift a bit lower. It could be a bit of profit taken uh, because of, of the, 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 the bull of sentiment could fade a little. Or they can then say the next week or so, we could be looking back at retesting, uh, the, retesting the highs of December. And then should we go beyond that, we could make a target in this zone here, uh, the up towards the July highs. It's only I don't really get worried if you have a size of break below kind of 7,500 down to 7,468. This kind of zone here. So you really have a decent break below that. But then you get a bit get a bit worried. And even then, we could see support coming into play from this blue line here, the 50 moving average just north of 7,400. And keep in mind, the FTSE is probably one of the weaker uh, indices uh, on the kind of from the kind of European point of view, from the European and American point of view. S&P 500, you know, that despite the fact, take a look at the initial reaction to it, to the figure, as you can see here, when the numbers came out, there's about a volatility, appears to be actually ever so slightly, I go right down to the, um, so the initial reaction was negative, then the market moved higher, then the market moved lower again, the long of the short of it is we seem to be ever so slightly below where we where we were when the numbers came out. I would suggest uh, that today may not be a fantastic day for the S&P 500, but keep in mind we've had we've had a fantastic days whereby the market's been racking up all-time highs. So if we take a look at the the daily chart, the big the big picture view is that the market's still very much in an upward trend. Uh, you know, this, a report like this is my view. Is it is all, not not is okay above average? It'll be the kind of report that might encourage a bit of profit taking or a bit of or or the report that wouldn't necessarily encourage people to kind of actively necessarily kind of buy straight in now aggressively. But it's it's not the, it's not so bad that it would turn around the sentiment, you know. So I think it's it's okay. Um, but when you're when you're comparing it to days of previous all time highs, it's not it's not amazing. I think the, the wider kind of trend um, is still very much in play. If you if you get if you get back above two, three thousand two hundred eighty, you know, um, and have a decent move beyond that, we could be looking at targeting three thousand two hundred ninety, and then of course, kind of psychologically important, uh, three thousand three hundred is the big one level to watch out for. You know, so if we're still very we're still clearly kind of in, in a kind of wider upward trend here, this is the daily chart. You know, you can see here. Uh, th this is when the kind of the market then began to kind of turn around in, in the wake of the um, when Iran essentially stated that they weren't interested in war as long as the United States has re retaliate. So the market regained all those all those all those uh, losses and went, managed to go on to kind of press on to all time highs. So even if you do kind of push a bit lower from here, support could be found from this blue line here, the water day moving average. You can see it acting as support um, in previous, you know, only uh, only yesterday, and now it come into play in around uh, 3,267. And even if you go below, below that, there's some consolidation in this zone here in around 3,260. You know, it's, it's, again, a pre it's an area of, of previous um, of previous resistance. Um, and so and, and also we saw some consolidation in that area only yesterday, last night. So I think the view is still is still very much in play. It's still very much to the upside. Even it's only really if we actually have a decent break below 3,200 of the lows of Wednesday uh, in a 3,181. It's only really if you have a decent break below that, because then we'd be thinking, you know what, we need to actually need to get out of here and take a look at something else. Um, I've covered gold and silver. I've covered the FTSE and the S&P 500. Are there any other markets you would like me to cover? Because I've been looking to. Uh, wrap things up in the next few minutes so absolutely feel free now we take a look at the uh, I'll say what's going on on the you know the, the currency markets are fairly quiet um, to be fair I'll take a look at what's going on on the um, on the euro versus the US dollar
Euro, please. Yep, no worries. Coming up. Like I, like I was saying, it's not a great report. So right on the right on the numbers, we saw the euro jolt higher versus the versus the um, the US dollar. It's so if you take a look from early October onwards, it's been broadly been moving higher. Nothing to get too excited about. There's no really clear pattern here. Uh, it wasn't that long ago the dollar index itself was at a multi month multi month low, uh, kind of four or five month low. So things aren't too great on the dollar, and today uh, this report isn't going to be anything special. Uh, it's, 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 it's not anything special, so you could see a bit of weak, continued weakness in the greenback. Um, oh yes, I'll come back to you in a second in relation to the S&P 500. Um, I see the, if, if you can hold above the 50-day moving average on euro dollar, which comes into play in a one spot 10, um, 90, one spot 10, 91. If you can hold above that, and we can also hold above. The 100-day movie average, which comes into play in at one spot 10.64. If you can hold above that, I think the kind of broader upward trend that's been in play for a few months is going to continue. And should that be the case, we could head back up towards the kind of 112 area. And then if you take out the highs that were achieved in, in uh, on New Year's Eve, we uh, we could be looking heading back towards this zone here in at one spot 12.49. Uh, it's only really if you can have a decent move below the 100-day moving average. Could then we'd be looking heading back down towards the uh, the 110 zone. Right, I'm going to come on to the uh, S&P 500 levels again, uh, and then look to kind of wrap things up. So, if there are any last minute requests in terms of price, act, in terms of um, in terms of what levels to keep an eye out for, uh, or markets to comment on, please um, please uh, message me now. So. If we do drift a bit lower on the S&P 500, we could be looking heading back towards 3,267. Uh, if we do have, have a decent move below that, um, we could also be heading back down towards 3,260. So 3,267, 3,260. And if even if you go below that, we could be heading back down towards 3,240, there thereabouts. I would only, only start to get worried about the... Um, the S&P 500 if you break below this area here in around 3,180. Other than that, I think the kind of wider upward trend is going to continue. I'm not entirely sure if we'll finish in the positive territory today. It might be a bit of a quiet day. Um, or if you do, it could be only a small small game on the S&P 500. It's not a particularly impressive jobs number. But the kind of where we're going to be in a few days' time, I would not be surprised if we're up at 3,290 or even beyond up towards 3,300 in the next couple of weeks. I think shall I take a look at um I take a look at pound versus the US dollar, um, and then we we'll like to wrap things up. So the wider view on pound on the pound versus the US dollar, sterling versus US dollar has been broadly moving higher for the last number of months. Um, this year. Was a jolt on October 10th about about the UK striking a, an exit deal with the European Union. This year was the general election jolt higher, where the market jolted higher, and then gave a pullback to this kind of consolidation zone here. And now we appear to be at the point of a higher high, a higher low, and potentially a higher high again. You know, so it appears to be while we hold above this 50 moving average, the blue line in, which is basically at 130. Big psychological number as well, so make, adding more credence to the importance of that number. Uh, if we could hold above that level, we could then be looking heading back towards 132. Then we go beyond that, we can head up. To, apologies, up towards kind of 130, one spot 32.84, the kind of late um, December high. And if you go beyond that, we could head up towards the kind of 135 zone. On euro dollar, it's only really if if we head if we have a size of break back below. 124 could then actually look to actually get a bit nervous. Uh, I, I, my apologies, I forgot about the Canadian numbers. I'm so sorry for those who are interested in, in dollar CAD. Uh, dot, some decent numbers out of Canada. Uh, the unemployment rate fell from 5.9 to 5.6, better than expected because we're expecting 5.8. And on the employment change front, the previous month's number was negative 71,200. They're expecting it to be positive 25,000, but is in fact positive by. 30, 35,200. So it was a better, it was a, a nice turnaround and exceeded expectations. 
So things are, are, are looking fairly decent uh, on that front. So I would suggest that it's strong for dollar cats. I would imagine that US dollar, the Canadian dollar is in the red right now, or at the very least only showing a small gain. So there we go, dollar CAD down eight tenths. Sorry, no, sorry apologies, down um, nearly two tenths of one percent. So if anyone trading that currency pair, keep an eye out um, on dollar CAD. We can see here once the numbers came out, there was a sharp sell off uh, on the back of that. This is the, this is the bar here, not you know mediocre, slightly good US numbers coupled with strong Canadian numbers. We see a decent sell off here. You know, I'm fully aware that uh, we've had a, a broadly speaking a move to the upside in the dollar CAD uh, in the last few sessions. As you can see here, we're, we're positive going into it. The market was pushing higher here, um, but it kind of seemed to kind of topped out in around the kind of one spot 31 zone. So it would, you know, it would seem to me that this we could be at the point where we, we're, we're this is the beginning of our next leg lower in dollar CAD. Dollar CAD has been pushing low since December. It hit a 14 month low uh, on Chris on New Year's Eve. Then we had the, the market bounce back bullish engulfing here but notice how the market when it got up to kind of one spot 31 zone it couldn't hold it and now we seem to be seeing um possibility of a formation of a, of a, of a engulfing of a, an engulf bullish bearish engulfing happening here this could be the point where dollar cad because it kind of continues in its wider downward trend heads back towards 130 and then back down towards the lows of, the, of december and then that then back down towards one spot 2964 should that be the case Right, uh, we've got a, It's coming up now to um, ten. To, you know, it's coming up now to thirteen fifty GMT. So I'm going to look to wrap things up there. Uh, I do appreciate all those who um, who tuned in and listened to our webinar. Feel free to join us for next month's webinar. And also, um, this video, I'm going to be. There's a recording of this webinar that's going to be on our YouTube channel. So please subscribe to that. It's also going to be published on our trading platform. If on our trading platform. Um, if you go under news analysis, click on insights, this tab here. For those of you who are on Twitter, uh, I'll be tweeting it out as well and, and be retweeted by the CNC Markets Twitter, uh, the main Twitter account as well. I would like to thank you again. Uh, have a good trading week and good luck.